I just received the first bill for a new car and I'm not gonna lie, I have locked it off my head. Over a thousand dollars a month for a car. We're living in crazy times when it comes to car prices. You're here because you wanna know how much we paid for our new Genesis and today I will give you a full breakdown and by the end of this video, you will know if we paid MSRP under it or even if we paid a dealership markup. Because of the crazy times we live in, things like APR, incentives, uh, manufacturer rebates, all those things are very important. In 2020, a lot of things happened around the car industry that modified the way we buy cars in America. And I wonder if these changes are here to stay. At the beginning of 2020, rates were low. Car loans were 4.56% for 60 months. In fact, between February of 2014 and February of 2020, rates on a 60 month loan remained between four and 5%. It was customary for many car companies to push 0% rates on select models to promote sales. I remember seeing 0% for up to 72 months. People with good credit would normally beat the average rate and obviously individuals with Dalmatian credit histories will pay more to lenders. Not only that, but car availability was also high. In 2019, new car inventory in the United States was 35% higher than in September of 2023, which is the last data I found on the internet. This would translate into car buyers being able to get good deals and immediate options. A car buyer will be considered uninformed for paying window sticker for a car. Manufacturer rebates and car companies offering their own financing with lower rates were the norm. I guess we could call that a buyer's market. Then came 2020 and hit it like a ton of bricks and all that changed. In fact, the release of the GV70 was delayed. I remember being excited about the GV70 when it first was announced, but it got pushed back so bad. Okay, let the fire truck pass by. It got pushed back so far back that I just changed my mind and I opted for a 2021 Tesla Model Y Performance. The payment for that car was at the time my biggest to date at $874.99. It's gonna get trickier, but I'll tell you more about it later. The supply shortage affected the car industry in a way that nobody could have predicted. With less cars available came dealer markups. Another phenomenon that became common was car flipping. People buying new cars just to turn around and sell them for thousands more. Before that madness, dealership would only mark up vehicles um, maybe on sought after special models that people really wanted but for the most part you could just drive into the dealership and at the very least pay msrp but this video is not a class on morals or ethics so i won't bore you with that but i brought this up because the gb70 was my first new car purchase since the model y and one awesome thing about the model y is that tesla doesn't have any price haggling so what you see is what you get and um, that brought me a lot of peace of mind in the buying process knowing that i would pay just as much as the guy next to me so when i bought our model y in march of 2021 i didn't have to deal with the typical dealership shenanigans but when it came this time around to get back into the car buying arena i was just anxious because of everything i hate about dealerships I must tell you that the best dealership experiences in the past had been with Lexus and because we're already committed to going back to an X350, we walk into a local Lexus showroom expecting good customer service that typically, typically avoids unpleasant practices. More on this in a future video because although it was not awful, it was not what I'm accustomed to from Lexus. If you watch my original video, we're already committed on the Lexus and last minute we changed our mind and we decided to give the GV70 a chance and we just walked in, we loved it. We negotiated and we just drove off. By now you're probably saying, bro, just get to the topic. But I understand that I'm just an average Joe trying not to get robbed by dealerships. I had heard not great things about dealerships from the Korean Auto Group. We sent a secret shopper in to supposedly buy this Kia car. He's told he also has to pay for paint protection, tire and rim warranties, rubber mats and other items. Hyundai and Genesis have frankly not done a good job with since they've launched this brand. The Hyundai dealerships don't know how to treat customers like the competitors do. And upon setting foot at the Genesis showroom, I encountered a sign that said, we don't sell above MSRP. I had never seen that in a dealership in the past and it was certainly reassuring. By the way, this is not what I experienced at the Lexus showroom the day before. But let's go back to the total cost of my Genesis GV70. Let me start by showing you the window sticker. Let's see what it reveals uh, right here, but I'm gonna turn it around so I'm able to read it. 
So basically the total price of this car was 58,860, but it included three accessories. The reversible cargo tray, which I didn't get. I keep forgetting to go back to the dealership to get it. And the first aid kit and wheel locks. But these are options that came with the car from the factory. So these are not dealer installed options. And another thing that I paid extra for was the special color, which is uh, it's called Big Black or 575. I did not find any single vehicle at the Genesis dealership that had that other sticker, the funny sticker that they put on the side with all the dealership installed options, which is pretty annoying because when I went to Lexus the day before, every single car on the lot had that. So basically you walk in and then the dealership is just gonna charge you for extra expensive stuff that you don't need on your car. And I don't want to spend too much time talking about rebates and special offers because I just don't know when you're going to be watching this video. I don't know where you are, but I'll summarize what we paid that day for ours. At the time of our purchase, there were some manufacturer rebates that were available and the sales consultant was very good at laying them on the table for us and see which ones we qualified for. And I remember one that was for a thousand dollars for current owners of vehicles from certain premium brands. And this is where my beloved E30 saved me a thousand dollars on this car because BMW was on that list. I've been doing research on the GV70 on websites like Edmunds.com and I really like that website in particular because it gives you an idea of what others are paying for the same car you want in your area. And that's a great starting point of negotiation. At the end, I was able to bring down the total price of our GV70 to $56,000 and I thought that was pretty good. The back and forth was minimal, all over text message, and I agreed to a fair price, walked in, and drove off. We didn't buy any service contracts because I believe that the Genesis warranty and the free maintenance is enough for us, so nothing was added to the overall price of the car. But the real savings came in the form of the interest rate, 2.99% for 60 months. That is a great deal that unfortunately is not available anymore. So I feel lucky that timing worked in our favor, and that is why my monthly is astronomically Hi. In order to get this rate, I had to finance or give 70 for 60 months or less. And going for 72 months would have increased the rate to 3.99, which wasn't bad, but I just wanted to save as much as possible. How much? Well, if I keep this car for 60 months, I'm gonna pay about $4,500 in interest. And going for 72 months at 3.99% would have cost me like $7,100, which is about $2,600 more. But loan rates right now are crazy high and credit unions are doing about 5.9. So let's say I went with the credit union for 60 months. If I have finance or GB70 for 60 months at 5.9, it would have cost me about $8,900, a lot of money, almost double of what we got with Genesis Financial. Yes, the price of a car is important, but because over 80% of us finance or new car purchases, a good credit score that gives you access to the best loan rates is a key factor in saving on your next vehicle purchase. In summary, we paid 4.86% below MSRP. We didn't have to buy any dealership install options. Our APR was 2.9% and our monthly payment is crazy high but allows us to save thousands down the road. This is the highest monthly car payment I have ever had. But as I mentioned earlier, our Tesla Model Y was costing us $875 per month. But what I didn't mention was that I was paying the full self-driving subscription for a few months and that was $214 plus another $10 for connectivity services that totaled $1,099 per month. So it's a slightly higher than this one. It's hard to talk about prices because there are charges and sales tax added on top of the purchase cost that vary between states and countries. Also, incentives available vary often per time of the year, per state, per country. This can vary depending on where you live. Can you negotiate the price of the GV70? I would say yes, and I will also try to negotiate the APR, and that's if you didn't walk with your own financing before you made your trip to the dealership. Luckily for us consumers, according to the data I found on autoblog.com, new car prices fell for most of 2023 with an average new car selling for about $48,000 in October of last year. Overall, new car prices have fallen over 3.5% since the peaked in December 2022 and this is data that I found that dates only back to October and that's the newest data I could find. So I would say that in 2024 you should expect the GV70 to drop a little bit in price just to follow trend with the car market and also because it's been around for about three years so I think this is uh, due for a refresh and that usually brings down the price of the current model so by the end of 2024 I expect this car to be a little bit cheaper than it was for me. I live in San Diego, California, so the total price of the car is affected by a combined tax rate of 7.75%. 
we put down five thousand dollars and our monthly payment is a thousand thirteen with 46 cents as i said earlier so multiply that by 59 for a grand total of $59,794.14. And once you add the down payment to that, at the end of five years, I would have paid $64,794 plus 14 cents. Wow. Somebody ought to smack you. That's just nuts. That is it for today. I'm interested in knowing how much you pay for your GB70. Do you pay a markup? Do you pay over MSRP? When did you buy it? Because I'm guessing that if you buy yours in the middle of the pandemic, you probably paid a little bit more. I just want to know what is your APR? How was your dealership experience? And all those things. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.